Hey guys, so welcome back to the YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna be talking about my Vitus Summit. So this is Vitus's big hitting top spec enduro race machine, ready to be ridden and raced actually across the roughest and longest Alpine descents you can point a stick at. You can get the Summit directly through Wiggle or TRC or Chamber Action Cycles online. And before we dive into this longer term review of the bike, Vitus is a long-term sponsor of ours. And I am gonna be as truthful and honest as I can with this, because just like with any of the bikes I've ridden before, there are things I really love about this thing, as well as some improvements I'd love to see in the future. So with that said, let's just dive straight into this. So one of the first things I did notice and pick up on was literally how well this bike climbs. Even though it's got 170 mil, 160 mil travel on the back of travel, this thing really does feel way lighter than it is on paper. If you look at the actual numbers, this bike is about 15.25 kilos in weight, which is about 200 grams lighter than last year's 2020 bike. But thanks to the completely redesigned carbon front triangle, and you pair that with the alley rear end, this thing really does climb like an absolute beast. I found you can get into a really comfortable rhythm and you can focus on the actual trail or the climb you're going up rather than feeling like the weight of the bike is the thing that's holding you back. So usually when I'm climbing, I'll lock out the rear shock on this bike and I know then that the pedaling energy I'm putting down is being transferred through those tires and it's actually moving me forward rather than me getting in like a bloody sea of peanut butter pedal bob. Now I know I've just talked about this bike being a great climber, but that doesn't mean there's going to be a trade-off when you point this bike downhill because this bike literally goes down as fast as it goes up. So one of the things I do love about this bike is just how maneuverable and responsive it is on pretty much any kind of track. Doesn't matter if you're riding steep or mellow trails, I think this bike wants to go faster downhill. And I've never found myself in a position where I've lost that feeling of bike control or bike feedback on the trail either. Whereas some of the bikes in the past that I've ridden, yeah, sure, they'll get you down the trails quickly, but I did actually feel a sense of plowing down a straight line kind of feel. Like the bike has that much travel, the trail underneath you almost is numbed because the bike is just like plowing through everything. But for me personally, I love a bike that lets you work with the track. And when you work with the track, it actually rewards you, even when you need to make a sudden change in line choice, or maybe it's a last minute decision to pop off some cool feature you've just seen off the main line to find something smoother. Either way, the bike really does respond to your input as a rider or a racer. And it's this responsiveness and liveliness that translates to how much fun you'll actually have on the trail, but don't let that liveliness fool you. The bike isn't twitchy and it's definitely not unstable. You point this down the gnarliest feature on the track, the bike will still leave you in the driver's seat completely in control. So when it comes to suspension, I've always been the guy who loves Fox suspension over RockShox stuff. So the VRX Summit does come with 170mm travel Fox 38 fork on the front, and it's got 162mm travel Fox float X2 rear shock on the back. It's been a really solid and balanced setup so far, and I do think it plays a big contribution to how playful and stable this bike is. I've been running Shimano's new 4-pot XT brakes, which come standard on the bike. These brakes have never faded, even on the longest trails I've ridden, and they've worked consistently in both wet and dry conditions with pretty much little to no issue whatsoever. This is a lot different than riding in the dry. I am soaking wet. Whoa. <laughs> I've bled the brakes routinely, probably every couple of weeks, and kept on top of the brake fluid and I think that's made all the difference. The bike's got 200 mil rotors, front and rear, and I think that's helped the brakes stay cooler on longer, like, rougher descents. And as for brake pads, I've switched and tried metal and organic pads. Most of the time, I'll just stick with a standard sintered pad just because I think they perform better in the majority of conditions and they last a lot longer than organic pads. So we'll move on to Shimano's XT 12-speed drivetrain that I'm currently running on this bike. Yeah, like with any 12-speed gearing, this gives you a huge range of gearing to help you get up the steepest of climbs, but then you've still got plenty of grab when you're going down. Arguably the best part about this bike has to be the price tag. You can get a full VRX bike 
for just under 3,600 UK pounds or a frame set for just under 1,600 pounds, which is absolutely insane. I have no idea how Vitas managed to spec their bikes like this, and I'm sure most of the people are left scratching their head as well, but it's absolutely amazing what you get for your money. I think it's easily capable of keeping up with any bike that costs twice or three times as much for the components you get and the performance of the bike. And what's even better is the money that you save on the bike up front compared to buying a Specialized or Santa Cruz or something like that, this extra money you could actually put towards upgrades if you wanted to on the bike or you could even put that towards coaching or bike park tickets to help improve your riding even more. Being on the taller side of things, I've always struggled to find a bike that fits me properly. The Summit I had last year, it was an okay size. I had an XL and it was slightly on the big side of things for my liking. So midway through last year, I did test out a size large frame. Unfortunately, that actually tipped the scales the wrong direction. And then I had a bike that was slightly too small. So it was kind of like stuck in the, between the two sizes where I feel a lot of people my height are stuck in this position as well. When Vitas released this new 2021 bike, I went on check with geometry and the large frame looked to be slightly bigger than last year. So that's the size I went with. So essentially I did down grade in size from the XL. As soon as I jumped on the bike I literally felt at home on this year's bike and it's mainly thanks to the sizing and some of the upgrades I'll get to in just a second. Now I did say I was going to be really honest and truthful with this review so I'm going to stick some guns on that and although I do love this bike in my opinion there's a few things that would make this an absolute perfect machine if they were altered in future iterations of the Summit. And the first thing is the cable routing that goes underneath the frame. For 90% of the frame routing on this bike, the cables are hidden and tucked away inside the frame. Although I've never had any issues with this, it still would give me peace of mind if the cables were completely internally rooted in the frame, out the way of any obstacles or rocks or roots or anything like that. Another thing I think that would make this bike even better than it already is, is the drop post size relative to the size of the bike frame. So basically the bigger size frame you get, the longer the seat post on the bike. And the same goes for chain rings as well. The chain ring that comes standard on this bike is a 30 tooth Shimano chain ring. So for me, I'd personally prefer to have either a 32 tooth ring or a 34 tooth ring on the front so I can keep the chain higher up in the cassette. But again, that's just personal preference because that is a bit of a trade-off with climbing steeper trails. So I guess that kind of comes down to personal preference as a rider and the trails you're gonna be riding. And one final thing I would add as an improvement for future bikes is for the bikes to come standard with a lower bash guard so the chain ring is actually protected. I think for a rider or even a racer, having that full top and bottom bash guard and guide on the top would be a complete peace of mind thing. So for 99% of people who do decide to go with the Vita Summit, I can probably guarantee they won't want to or need to change a single component on the bike because it already comes pretty high spec out of the box. I have changed a few components based on how I personally like a bike to feel and the brands that we work with. So first off, I did swap out the Maxxis tires that came standard on the bike and then put WTB rubber on there. I've got a Verdict 2.5 up front and a Vigilante 2.3 in this video on the rear. Same for saddles, I did switch the saddle out. It came with a Nuke Proof saddle. I switched out for a WTB Silverado saddle in the medium size. And when it comes to handlebars, I personally love a higher front end on my bike. I did switch out the original 25 mil Rise Nuke Proof bars to a 38 mil Horizon handlebar just to get that front end a little bit higher. The bike comes with a really solid set of DT Swiss wheels and hubs. These are some of the strongest wheels I've ever used and they seat extremely well if a tubeless setup is what you're after. I did switch these out as a personal choice and I'm currently running Nuke Proof Horizon V2 wheels. These are like a real strong and reliable wheel set with a, it's a ridiculously loud free hub buzz. I mean, take a listen to this. To add some more protection, that's the exact reason why I run rim pack tire inserts. And if you've never heard of rim pack tire inserts or even inserts in general, they're basically just a ring of high density foam that help protect your rims from dents and dings. That also allows you to run super low pressures without the tire rolling or losing performance. Nine PSI, look at that, so soft though. And if you did happen to get a puncher, you can actually ride on the insert and it'll get you to the bottom of the trail. 
And because we're in Scotland, I've also added a mud hugger to the front of my bike just to keep that Scottish slop from slapping me in the face. I also like to keep things real simple. So I run these little cable organizers at the front of my bike to keep the cockpit as tidy and as neat and as quiet as possible. And one last thing I'm gonna to add to this little review video is this little blue thing on my stem. And it's funny the amount of people that ask me what it is, and it is a quad lock out front mount. It allows me to attach my phone to my handlebars and it's great for navigating or just listening to music when you're climbing up. I don't really use it for the downhills. I usually take it off and put my phone in my pocket, but you could use it for downhills if you really wanted to. I mean, this thing is not going anywhere. It's absolutely solid once it's locked on there. It's really easy to take on and off and it's just a great little gadget to have on the bike. So all in all, this bike is an amazing piece of kit. It will comfortably and comfortably take on any feature you want to throw at it. For me, there's been no lack of confidence when riding this bike. And if there's anything on a track that I actually avoid, it's based on my own risk and reward thought process. It's never because I feel or think I'm underbiked. It's mainly just because of my own thought process. And I've never actually felt overbiked on this thing either. So even though it's a huge 170 mil travel enduro bike, this thing still keeps the qualities of an efficient short travel trail bike. It's great to play on, it's great for jumps, drops, or you can send it down a downhill or enduro trail. And this do it all solid mountain bike will just like plow through and just put a smile on your face and guarantee that. So if you are looking for a solid spec do it all mountain bike, I think the Vita Summit should be on your shortlist. You add in some cheaper upgrades like tire inserts and a bash guard for your chain device like we talked about and you would have yourself an unstoppable machine. And if you do want to see more of this bike in action, make sure you check out some of our previous POV videos. And make sure if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, hit the like button. And for more bike related videos and adventures and stuff like that, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.